I'm your host, Jay Rodriguez, and thanks for joining me today, this afternoon, this evening. I don't know where in the world you're watching this. I'm just going to greet you in the universal. Hi, family. Welcome. All right. So this is a brand new virtual streaming show that I have partnered with San Diego Pride on because I've been working in queer media a long time. 23 years this year in entertainment as a, as a profession, and I've met so many incredible, profoundly talented LGBTQ plus artists. And I found in my journey, they often didn't have so many platforms that they could go to to celebrate not just their art, but their passion, why they make the music, what the music is about, and what they feel the purpose of their music is. Now today, my first guest is someone that I have known for many years. I know I look like a child, but we've known each other many, many years. And uh, we first met in New York City. Uh, she is a fantastic vocalist, an actress, an advocate, a dancer, you name it. She's a songwriter. Please welcome Mila Jam. There you are. Hi. Oh my God. Hi, Jay. That's a really nice shirt. Everyone, I need you to. V-O-T-E. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? First of all, let's just do a check in. You're in New York, right? Yes, I'm in. I'm in New York, and it is not a ghost town. That's what I thought. I've been see. I was like, "How is it a ghost town?" I see videos of people, and yeah. I'm. I'm. You know, I am making the best of a really weird, crazy, awful situation. Like yeah. you know, I've been saying to my friends and family, like in this mid-COVID experience we're here like it's not pre-covid it's not post-covid we're like mid-covid yeah and you know we're in the middle of the biggest election of our lifetime and i voted so i feel a little bit of a weight lifted off of my shoulders to be honest with you and i am really checking in with like my self-care and mm -hmm. surrounding myself with people that are caring for me loving on me and supporting me we need that especially as members of the community. So I, I mean, agree. I'm, I'm good, you know, I'm good. And it's a, it's a daily process. It's a day to day kind of thing. You know, I just take it one day at a time. Good. I love that. You know, for so long, uh, we've been working in all different facets of entertainment um, with your music. Um, I, remember you singing back in New York, being blown away, but recently you came to Los Angeles, uh, I think it was maybe last year, and you uh, came to an open mic thing in WeHo, and I just was floored. Um, with your music, you've had such a powerful um, voice in terms of advocacy and and parlaying the two of those. So how did that come about for you? Um, and were you ever kind of nervous because you know some people try to come for us and they're like, can you just sing? I don't want to hear you talk about that stuff. You know, we, uh, okay, so, you know, speaking to you as, thank you, first of all, thank you very much. As a woman of, of color, as a black woman, a black woman who is trans, I feel like we have to continuously make space and room for ourselves because people don't do it for us. Yeah. Um, so everything that we have and that we we show is pretty much from our own experience. Like we were literally creating it as we move. So that's why it's important for me to just be my own voice. So everything mm -hmm. that I do for the community is really for myself and it's for us collectively together, moving together, doing this together because there are so many unprecedented things that we're doing in this moment of the tipping point and you know trans people being visible and on TV and in media and you know so I just always felt like 
I want my voice to not only be heard, but I want it to be purposeful. And I want it, I don't want to negate my experience because mm -hmm. for so long, you know this, people in our industry, we always are up against negating who we are. You can't be gay on TV. You can't be gay in music. You can't be trans. You can't be black. You can't be too dark. You can't be too fat. You can't be too, so it's all of this stuff that we're inundated with. And I just want to be me. That's all it is. And yeah. um, hopefully you're in time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think people are, especially, you know, all the love you got on that powerful photo campaign where you had the word stop killing us painted on your body. How'd that come to be? Oh, it's beautiful. We're looking at it now. Um, it's on the screen. Um, I think that's the image, but also you have uh, put that image into different high profile events uh, using that as a landscape as well on subways. I mean, it's a really powerful campaign. So talk to us how that came to be. And did you think that it would get as much um, love and support. I mean, it's been shared so many times and it's got a you know great message. I'd love to say that this is my Mona Lisa because mm. we remember we remember things that affect us visually. Um, you know, there's something about being an artist um, and a creative where I'm so into imagery and to uh, photography and visual arts, even though I'm a musician and an actress. It, it's something that resonates with us and we it's etched in our minds and we don't forget it. And mm -hmm. the whole idea sort of came from, it sparked from seeing actually um, a woman, a trans woman on a float wear, um, wearing a dress or a gown at a pride parade, I believe it was a few years ago. And it said, I think on it somewhere, it said, it's like, stop killing us. And I wow. thought to myself, Oh my God, it is so important for people to have this message in their everyday daily experience. How do we amplify that? How do I make this something? And, I, and as artists do, we take an idea and we run with it. So I took this idea and I was like, it needs to be on my body. I need to be naked and I need to be walking around the street. So it actually appeared, the first time it appeared was in my music video Masquerade mm -hmm. and I'm on a top nude wearing the words all over my body stop killing us and what um charles zambrano is this amazing makeup artist effects artist who actually painted me i was on the uh, monet exchange show last year a year ago and i was her first musical guest on the exchange rate on the build yeah. series and i just was like this has to be an iconic moment so as i did this performance you know he painted me we like we we curated it so that it could be legible and it could be important and you could see it and you would not mistake it for anything else. After the performance, I literally ran out in the street and my manager takes the photo of me. So the photo you see of me in the street is the original photo. And I knew then and there, it was going to be something that would out, I think it will outlive me. So <laughs> I mean, I, you're so courageous. Cause I, I mean, I struggle with body issues. I'm sure everyone does, but there is a sense of, um, you just feel like There's a weight that, is lifted. That on top of it too, because also as a black trans woman, the way that people know us, there's two things. People only know us for our bodies, i.e. Mm. pornography and sex, mm. sex, and people are always denying us our bodies. So it's yeah. like this weird conflicting uh, existence that we were up against. And so part of me was like, I'm comfortable in my body. I want to show that. But then also someone might say, well, why do you have to be nude? Why do you have to be naked to make this message? And it just kind of ties in the full experience of my body is always in question. But the point mm -hmm. is to get the message and to see the message and the words on my body. And this makes room and space for everyone because we should be loving our bodies no matter what yeah. they look like. And no, and you know, in case you know, folks may not be uh, aware, you know, trans women, specifically black trans women, are murdered at a higher, at a disproportionately higher rate than any other uh, section of our community. Um, I'm sure you've gotten many messages about how this piece of art and self-expression has touched people. What did that feel like? It feels like connecting. It feels like connecting and it feels like we we are having um, we're having an experience, a spiritual experience and exchanging. Um, you know, it, first of all, you know, it wouldn't be New York if you don't hear an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> they come you, hear, <laughs> you know, it's New York when you hear a police officer or a car or an ambulance. 
I thought you were going to be like, my boyfriend's here. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, this is my honey. I want you to meet him. No. <laughs> yeah. No, but I really think that it, it gave people something to talk about. Because you know we are in an, in an industry where it's about talk and it's about what's happening. So it gave people a reason to talk, to think, to question, to um, to support. And I'm here for it. I mean, so many people were sharing it and have been sharing it throughout the last year. Yeah, and you know, I, this kind of you you touched on a little bit, but you you said you know as a black woman, as a black uh, trans woman, we are now having this sort of national reckoning. Um, and I think it was sparked years ago with the with the you know uh, emergence of uh, the incredible Black Lives Matter movement, but it was so panned a couple years ago. And I remember being on a stage in San Francisco for a, someone had hired me to like MC something, and it was a mortgage bank company, and I was on stage, and it was the end of the night. And the guy came up who was running the whole thing and he was like, and I know we're hearing a lot about Black Lives Matter, but shouldn't all lives matter? And I was like, cause he had my mic and I was like this, you know. So as it relates to you and this Black Lives Matter momentous moment where you see at the marches, it is the full tapestry of all different skin colors, ages, uh, gender expressions, different folks supporting the movement but even within our own community, it seems like there needs to be a reckoning even within the LGBTQ plus community. So when it comes to the Black Lives Matter movement, can you speak to that as a, uh, what that means for you? Because I know you've been very vocal on social media about it. Yeah, this is about us really lifting up this rug as a country and we're cleaning house. And there is all of this buildup that's you know 400 plus years of buildup that we've got that we have been disconnected trying to kind of reconcile our place in in this system in this government um, and we're completely disregarded we're completely looked over we're completely um, you know attacked and ridiculed and so it's important for us to keep having these conversations because as we pick up this rug, rug and we clean underneath it these things are going to come up these things are going to be really nasty and and difficult and tough for us to to digest whether you're a black person or a non-black person um it, it's something that we all have to have the conversation around and so i understand when people say something like when they say all lives matter they're just overstepping and missing the point and the point yep. is to negate anyone else's life. The point is to have the conversation about the lives that are completely getting overstepped and the lives that we're not actually supporting um, in our judicial system, in our government, um, mm -hmm. with our police you know, forces and all of the people that have power, they keep us under for a yep. reason. Um, right. So even in our community, in the subculture of our community, the, the LGBTQ plus community, it's always a byproduct of the bigger hand. World, you know, yeah. Yes, I guess. And I just want us to know that we have to uplift, we have to talk to each other, we have to make the mistakes, we have to ask the questions, we have to, you know, sort of come to some com you know, conversational agreement, you know, and agree to a disagree and, and, and sometimes as well, but like this is why we have to talk about it. Okay. I agree. Without without the conversation, it's never gonna happen. And then sometimes I reflect back to that finding Nemo quote, you know, when Dory is there with Marlon and she sees this like weird cave and he's like, let's just go above it. And she's like, no, no, no. I think we're supposed to go through it. Sometimes the only way through, yeah. you know, out of something. Dory is to knows. Go Dory knows. The Dory right. knows. <laughs> you know, and it's like, it's good. It's sometimes it's messy. Sometimes people, we can be scared of saying the wrong thing, but if we say nothing, we're very much complicit in so many ways to egging on a system that disproportionately impacts people in a negative way. Um, and so I just want to thank you for that because I've, I've been, I, I follow your page religiously, but I just, you've been so vocal about it and specifically um, highlighting that all black lives matter because for a minute there, it was, it was seemingly from the outside uh, that trans women weren't we somehow a part of that. Yeah. We don't get to choose the black people that get to be a part of this, conversation and this movement because of their existence. It's not um, something that we get to delegate. I think that we do have to make space and it can be very difficult because people don't know disabled people, people don't know trans people, people don't know, um, you know, gay people, black and brown people that are queer. It's, it's you know, it's something that everyone's not familiar with. And yeah. you, can't, you can't just be 
you know, rooting for yourself. It's literally like without, you know, exhausting all of your, your, um, your, your rights. It's just literally saying like, I'm with you. I, mm -hmm. I don't have to understand it completely, but I'm with you and I'm, I'm here for you. you. Let's make yeah. this movement because the more of us that are together, the more of change that we can affect, you know? Agreed, and you know, speaking of being with people, it's been a while <laughs> since we've been able to do that. I miss performing live. I didn't realize how much of my career involves an audience until it was completely wiped away. Um, how has <laughs> the pandemic impacted you as a performer? Because everything's yeah. different now. I've been trying to do virtual shows and figure out my path, but what's it been like for you during COVID as a performer? It actually allowed me to focus, refocus my energy to do mm. things that I think are very important as a visible person with a platform. Um, I'm just like, I am the kind of girl that wakes up, I put on some Beyonce or something, and I go and I do my warm ups and I sing and I just, I just, you know, I entertain myself and my dog and my <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And think about being able to find other ways to use my presence and to connect. And for me, that has been about outreach, uh, panel discussions, conversations, diversity uh, speeches with companies. Um, mm working with a lot of major corporations and companies that don't have any connection to trans people, especially black trans women. I, I, have, just, that. I have just started working with a great company organization that I'm very happy to call my family um, out leadership. We are connecting and combining our powers together like Captain Planet to create <laughs> platforms and um, initiatives for black trans women specifically, but trans people in general and to, to, you know, talk about what it looks like to be, uh, to have equity. Um, you know, my word of the year is not equality, it's equity. We need equity, we need money, we need to be able to, I'm not running for office because I feel like I'm giving this speech right now. Like, no, I feel I like, like people, we need to have financial support because people want to hear our stories. They want to know where we came from, how we got here, what we're doing, who we're dating, how we're having sex. Just pay, pay us. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, if I can add to that, I feel like for me on my side where, you know, now I'm pitching shows and stuff and I always get the, 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 the message back. We love the idea. Now, can you go find, you know, an out, uh, if it's maybe an out gay person to be a famous out gay person because that's the only way we'll make it if you attach an a-lister and the same thing i think if you're going to make our stories can you please hire us to tell our own stories because for years it was cis straight people who wanted to be allies who wanted to get these stories and so they would write it with a little research and ultimately it wasn't authentic to experiences that we have within the community so my push for that is also like and then also hire and pay LGBTQ plus creators, whether it's showrunners or anyone else. Um, right I, now we're in, I just yeah. wanted to add that we're not right, right now. We're in the position of asking and getting some pay payment, but we're we're working towards getting people paid what they deserve. That's right. Yeah, I love that. You know, speaking of getting paid what you deserve, I, I've interviewed so many female uh, uh, musicians, and over the course of I don't know the past ten years of kind of having these conversations, many of them say that it is really tricky in the music industry as a female because it is a male dominated industry. And even though we, like I'm not in the music industry, I don't see the underbelly of it. You would know better, but have you, how have you navigated uh, uh, this industry that is so male uh, dominated? You know what I've done? This is one thing that I think being trans has um, allowed me to tap into. When you're when you're working with your your purpose and you're you're you know rooting for yourself and you're self motivated and you're doing you're focused on what your goals and accomplishments are. You know there are gonna. I, I mean I'm so used to people being like, no, or I don't get it, or I don't understand, or what is it, or all of this stuff. It, I've heard it since I was, I mean, a, a child. And mm -hmm. I've had equally people be like, oh, you have something, we, you, there's a gift, there's some talent, you, you, something that we want to work with. And so for me, it's really about shutting out this noise that kind of comes with the industry. But guess what? The music industry is not what it was like in 1990. It's not what it was like in 2000. It is different. And now it's the the format is literally you can create your own presence and your own platform with your own connection to your audience and to your friends. So for me, right. it's important as an independent artist to like to love on y'all and like have y'all and have people 
you know, directly connecting to my music because guess what? That shows the CEOs of those labels what, where the power really is because it comes from the people that are following the artists that they love to see and hear from. And yeah. they, they're they just players in the game, but like the game has changed so much. So I just yeah. can't, I don't, the idea of answering to, you know, uh, and it happens. Yes, let's be honest. It does happen. There are it men things, and mm -hmm. you know, to them, but I'm very much diligent about my vision and what I want and what I need to happen, you know? And sure. at the end of the day, listen, if your way is going to make us get what we need to get and get further than, you know, where we we're going, we can talk, yeah. but, yeah, but if not, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to be involved with it. Um, you know, when we talk about music, do you feel like we're leaning into a space where we will start seeing um, mainstream recording artists um, who are trans, who are non-binary, who fit uh, in a different mold than what the music industry before told us, you know, musicians are supposed to be like? We we, we already have it. We, we have we do. It. We already have it. You know, it's, I mean, we're missing one element. That is Mila Jam. And it's, it's on the rise. It's coming through. It is like we're we're making those. Um, you know, we got those baby steps. We're coming in. Y'all know it's happening. But we have artists that are stepping into their truth, that are living out loud, that are starting to separate themselves from machines that are not letting them be who they are and be authentically themselves. You know, it's 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 like seeing the the Sam Smith and the you know we do have like Kim, Kim Petras and we have. Sure. Um, you know, a lot of different artists that are, are LGBTQ plus, but I feel like we need a more black artists that like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. We need black trans artists like that. Yeah, and listen, if people are new um, to Mila's work, you can obviously follow her on social media. We'll post all of her stuff. And then, by the way, guys, um, for everyone watching right now, guys, gals, and all our fam listening right now, there is a comment section, and we're going to get to those comments that you, uh, comments and questions that you might have for myself or Mila. I want to also talk about, um, you know, when I saw when I got to introduce you last summer at Pride. First of all, a you, you reference Beyonce listening to her in the morning, but to me, you are you you have notes of Beyonce, and I mean that like in 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 terms of your essence and your vibe because you dance so full out. You almost dance like someone who wouldn't have the pipes you do, but you have insane vocals too. And then it makes me mad because after your dance break, then you just sing like nothing happened. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like the breath control. So I mean, you know, I, I think I think there is space for that. I think it's part of it is we just need to get rid of the stigma that people have about the unknown and telling these stories and sharing our lives authentically, I think starts to chip away at the stigma. I think there's always room, personally, as an artist, I think there's always room for growth. So if you're coming from a place of thinking that you just got it and that's just what it is, then mm -hmm. that's trapping your career. It is yeah. about a continuous road to learning new technique, learning new form, uh, the, the hunger and the chase of, of wanting to build your, uh, your apparatus and all of that stuff. So this is why, like, you know, I feel like, a Beyonce is someone, you know, lover or hater, someone that we've seen grow over the years and the yeah. impact is so big and it's so huge. I just want everyone to know that when the floodgates are open to Mila Jam to impact the world the way that I'm going to do, <laughs> y'all can buckle up and be ready. Uh, yes. like, I would say the way you have and the way you are in my mind, the way okay. I see you. Um, but I also... Can we talk? Okay, wait. So get comfortable. I'm gonna have a sip of my coffee because now we're gonna talk personal stuff. Oh, oh, oh where I, I'm having coffee. Where's my? Coffee? You talk. You talk about it on on social media. You talk about dating, and it's one of the things that I have. You know, I'm 41, and I certainly have had my ups and downs. I found it to be a struggle, just you know, being a gig worker and always bouncing around and. Um, and working in entertainment, but you have really kind of unpacked some of the, the darker parts of what it has been like for your experience in dating, uh, specifically online and stuff. So what's it been like for you? Because I love following you on Instagram. Sometimes you'll post conversations and they're almost like teaching tools in a way through yeah. your life. Um, 
It is a conversation and is a teachable moment. I think my life experience in our age of, you know, the internet and sharing and oversharing, I wasn't one of those people that was telling about my experience and my transition over the unit, the, the internet on YouTube and, you know, the process. So for me, I feel like my way to connect with the audience and my uh, my followers and my fans is to show what it really is like when I'm having conversation about who I am because I have no shortage and let's be real let me be real with you most trans women don't have a shortage of suitors or interest from, okay. from men here there and everywhere okay the problem is that people think that we're this secret commodity and that's I'm just here to tell you we're not like people guys like trans women, a lot of them like trans women, they just don't wanna talk about it. And so that is part of the problem. Um, I like to say that visibility won't save us. We have to be very specific about, it is an important tool in saving us. We have to be visible, but at the end of the day, it's about the relationship building. It's about the connections we're making with people. And most people don't have a direct connection to someone that is in their, their life and that is strange. And so when you have, you know, women are looked at as objects in general. And then you have trans women that were all looked at as something that's not supposed to really exist in reality and in real time. It makes me feel like I want everyone to see what really happens when we have these conversations. And I love my fans and I love my jammers because we always, they're always like, how can someone say that or look at you that way or degrade you? And I'm like, you don't understand. Their point of view is that we've never been seen as worthy in our in this you know the culture. So I'm here to change like the level of worthiness that we have because we have the rise of other. We're so worthy, and we're yes. you're missing out. I like these guys. They are dumb as a doorknob most of the time. <laughs> so I just want you to know that you know you are connecting with and talking with. Mila Jam, you are connecting with and talking with Laverne Cox, you're connecting with MJ Rodriguez or Trey Placette or all of these um, Angelica Ross, these brilliant women and these brilliant minds and all the brilliant women and brilliant minds that are not on TV that are like watching them. Mm -hmm. That is what, you know, that's the human spirit and connection we need, okay? Like at the end of the day, I get it. We all want to have a good time and just be like, you know, be cute and you know have a kiki, but we have so much more to offer. And I think yeah. that's what I want to see in the future is that there's so much more that people and families and families of the people that want to to be interested in us can benefit from because we yeah. are vulnerable. Yeah, I think you, I I see it as such a teachable moment because I didn't you know I'm I'm not in your DMs and sometimes you you post these conversations and what they do is kind of just give us a broader sense and I, I thank you for your transparency because yeah as your friend uh, of course like there's parts of me that what read them and I get angry um but I think it's you are educating through that moment when you post those things because I think people think that uh, maybe they don't happen at such a high frequency and 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 that maybe when someone says something suddenly when you see it going back to the visual learners it's it sticks and you're like oh wow that's you know it's jarring um, but I, I know that um, speaking of seeing you you were on SNL in that great town hall sketch with Billy Porter <laughs> yes. and you commented when you posted the picture that uh, that you couldn't wait to come on next time as the musical guest so I guess yeah. my question is what else are the things that are on your bucket list because I've seen you perform you already you know you, you you're a full package deal so. What, what else is um, out there that you're like really wanting? SNL performer, got I'm it. I'm excited. I can't wait to perform an SNL. I can't wait to uh, perform at the Video Music Awards. Yes. Um, I've spoken to Laverne Cox about uh, introducing me um, because that's one of my dreams. Um, I, I was, I remember I actually went to the, so the VMAs is one of my biggest dreams. And I remember going with her as her guest in 2014. And, um, I always thought to myself, like I saw Kim uh, Kardashian introduce one of her good girlfriends, um, an art. I can't remember the artist. I don't remember who it was. Maybe it was like some artist, probably like somebody. And she somebody. was, like, she was like my best friend, you know, X Y Z. And I was like, oh my god, that is exactly how it's gonna happen. I want <laughs> her to come out, and she's gonna literally be like. 
ladies and others and in between or whoever. My yeah. best friend, Mila Jam. And that's that's how it's written in my mind. So that- let me tell you, I think that could happen because you know in our industry, one day you're like, oh my God, I wanna quit. And the next day, the ma most massive opportunity comes up. And it's happened to me a million times, even during this pandemic. And it's just like, you have these moments. I really see this for you. I think it's a real realistic, Thing that is that we are going to see you it's at the manifestation. It is a I manifestation, and so I manifesting it. it. Um, and that's one thing I have just to you know, Laverne is my dearest sister, and I. She just teaches me the art of manifesting. We talk about this all the time about how important it is to see ourselves and to see us in it, and to smell it, and to feel it, and to be able to receive it. Because as it happens, and as it's, as it's coming to us, we our bodies and our energies will will attach to it, and it actually creates it into a reality. And I so agree. I'm all about that Brene Brown bringing the energy and manifesting it into a reality. Um, but that, that's why I feel like the taste of it is just so close to me because like I said, uh, being on SNL and seeing what the process is being backstage, um, you know, I'm very close to Billy Porter as well. So being there with Billy Porter and I actually was with him the whole time I was on set. So that was great to see things through his experience and him being a special guest. Um, the, the, the Grammys are something that I've always wanted to be a part of, to be able to perform on the Grammys, the Billboard Music Awards, the American Music Awards. I'm actually someone who loves the Music Awards. So if you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, at Tiny Desk uh, uh, is one of the things. Uh, karaoke Carpool. I yes. just, there's so many uh, outlets and facets of this industry that I that are just unprecedented for someone like myself. Yeah. And, I will, you know, shout out to my um, pop star queens that have led the way, like the J Lo and the Janet and the Madonna, because they also helped me remember that it, you know, this industry has shifted from you having to be 18 or or 15 to being able to just create your path and be able to make it happen, even in your 30s, you know. So yeah. it's like. And the women you mentioned are a lot older than that. So, I mean, that's it. Exactly. So a lot. We have a lot of getting to know each other. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about this because, you know, you're more than just a, a vocalist. You have, like me, you were in Rent. Are there any other, speaking of breaking ground, are there any other Broadway shows that you'd like to do? I mean, would you even consider doing theater again? I will give when you, the world is open. I will give you a sneak sample. <gasps> one of my dream parts and my dream roles. Okay, I'm I'm trying. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. What ever happened to my part? It was exciting at the start. Well, we're halfway through act two, and I've had nothing yet to do. I've been off stage for far too long. It's ages since I had a song. This is one unhappy diva. The producers have deceived her. I would love to play the Lady of the Lake in Spamalot. Lady of the Lake, our friend Sada Ramirez. I love you. Sada, I love you. Yes, yeah, Sada and I are friends. Like she, uh, well, they, uh, when, uh, pr prior to you know her her journey beginning um, on television, uh, we were really close, and then she got Grey's Anatomy at at the time. I'm actually yeah. Now um, uh, they use they then pronouns it and came out recently as a non-binary. Yeah. Might have been two years ago, and um, so pardon me for saying uh, she, but uh, they have been such a a, a loud and proud no, um, advocate that it gives yeah. me a hope because I know that when they started the show, there was a lot of talk about them being curvy, Grey's Anatomy and everything. And then when they cut their hair and it was short, but yeah. Sada, Sada has never stopped working, you know, One and there's something about- Gorgeous yeah. human beings ever. Yes. And you know, we go way back because Sada um, and I, okay, so the, a funny story is, I was able to see that show on Broadway, um, Spamalot, and I saw, Sara in the show, and I re and and at the time I was um, on a the A train. We have an yeah. A train story where um, I was with uh, uh, one of the boyfriends from back in the day, and we <laughs> we saw Sara on the train, and I was like, oh my god, I saw you in the show, and we had like a little moment. Cut to a moment where they were um, 
assisting, managing, uh, I don't know if they're still working with, but one of my good sisters, India Moore. Um, yes. We love India from Pose, uh, Angel. And uh, India and I were, we were doing a project together and Saga was there and was on set with us. And I was like, oh my God, do you remember me from the A? This was also transformative because we knew each other both in a different part of our lives. It was totally mm -hmm. a different time when we met each other. And so mm -hmm. me being me and them being them, it was just so beautiful, but I love Saga. And that role is one of my favorites. I would love to role. You would, you would slay that role so hard because it's also, the, the, what's so great about that role, why I think it would suit you so well. It is, yes, a belty, beautiful, great song, but it's a comedy song it's a comedy. Too, and, and, role, and you would, you're so great with comedy. So um, have you been, cause what I've been finding comedic is that things don't fit me anymore in quarantine um, <laughs> because I have just decided, I thought, well, I'll just take a couple months off from doing any kind of exercise. The gyms are closed. So um, I've been cooking things, but have you gotten anything crazy uh, made out of your kitchen? Have you, have you tried baking so, things? Yeah. So I don't bake. Um, but a girl loves a cookie. I love a chocolate chip cookie. It's my favorite thing in the whole world. If you ever want to like surprise me or give me a chocolate chip cookie and I will be the happiest person ever, just literally present it to me and I'll be happy. But my, my best friend and my roommate likes to make banana bread. Ooh. And so we've been making banana bread. We've made too much banana bread. Um, we've done all kinds of, we've done chocolate chip banana bread. We've done confetti banana Ooh. bread. We've Coffee, we've done um, peanut butter, we've done all like it's, it goes on and on. And on. <laughs> I cooking wise, um, I'm a, I'm I'm not a cooker, but I love breakfast and I cook Ooh. breakfast. That's the southern girl okay. in me. So yeah, yeah. ATL shouty. Um, I love a good <laughs> egg and you know I love a good bacon and eggs and grits mm, and yum. you know toast or, or waffle moment. Great. Yeah. That's all right. We'll find your boyfriend who does the dinner part. It's fine. Um, or he'll yeah. take you out. Yeah, there we go. So what do you think? We've been talking about it kind of lightly throughout, but what did, have you learned anything uh, uh, during this time? Because I feel like for me, it was like just figuring out what was most important when everything else was taken away. But what have you learned during this sort of quarantine time? I've learned that if you come out of this quarantine the same person, you did not learn anything. Mm. Just yeah. because we've been in such a, a a real like we're having to get raw with who we are and and our our strengths our weaknesses uh, our hopes and our fears and a lot of people are alone a lot of people live alone a lot of people are in relationships that weren't working out and that didn't work out and right. everyone's lives have been uprooted. And so this is really giving us a transformative experience. This is what transitions are. This is what being trans is about. It's about being in this experience that you don't have any knowledge of and moving through it and coming out of it fuller and, and more in tune with who you are and what you want in your life. You know, and I, I realize yeah. I want more people and I want more grace and kindness and more connection and more um, respect. Yeah. You, and equity, that's the big word of the year. Um, I, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of folks are gonna be watching this either live with us now or when we post it. I guess I wanna know, you know, there's there's probably a bunch of young black girls, young black, black trans young women who look up to you and see so many of these highlights uh, in your career and in your music. And I guess, what would, what would your advice to these young women looking up to you be? Because, you know, it's, it's not an easy road growing up in general. Um, but certainly if they want to be a performer, a musician, if they're so inspired by you, what, what what would you say to them? I would say you have to love yourself fiercely because no one else will do it for you. You mm. have to make that, that all that with, that's what that's inside of you that means so much to what you want, what your end goal is, who you see yourself as. It is such a journey and the only way you make it is if you never give up on yourself. You just yeah. have to be so grounded in, in, even if you don't know it for you, know that it exists and that it happens. Me speaking as someone that's doing it, it is something that you have to continue to believe in. And that's mm -hmm. how you get there. It's, it's every little step of the way. Um, you know, I have, I think I have a decent memory, but one thing that I know that I do personally is all of the trauma that I've experienced in my life, I've tended to block out a lot of it because it just creates fog and a cloudiness for me to 
for me to focus on all the things that I want and yeah. that I want to move in. And if there's a way for you to avoid certain roadblocks, avoid them. Whether that's drinking, that's drugs, that's um, harming yourself, all of that stuff. It's like, I'm all about a good time, but I'm so not here for like, I, this is a vessel. So we got to protect it. Yeah. So you know that you are a vessel and you got to protect that. it. Now you are, you, you are vocal about how you feel. You are an advocate in a very profound and proud way, but you're in entertainment. I mean, do, do you, there's a lot of people who along the course of my career have been like, you shouldn't, don't post stuff like that. I don't personally care. I keep it up there. Guess um, what, Jay? Guess what? There, there's only one me. So what I'm doing has never been done. Right. And that's yeah. that. Yeah. I draw inspiration. I can find the things that really make me, you know, someone I've actually been really researching a lot lately that I'm so, I, she is everything. I, I'm a really big fan. I realize I'm a big fan of Dolly Parton because yes. someone like Dolly is, ever since she came into the industry and the world, she was like, I know who I am. I know what I want. I know what I deserve. And the naysayers are the naysayers. But like, she's always been such a light. And right. even when she's known when to play her cards and to say what she needed to or not say what she needed to, it's all a maneuvering. It's a game to some degree. You have to be able to know when to hold them and when to fold them. But I just, I love that she's been so steadfast and so like, to this day, she's still, that, that's an icon to me. It's like, yeah. the iconography transcends all of the years. Like, yeah. Well, she also, you know, she openly in her, in her holiday, I think it was her, her Netflix uh, series, her Netflix she talks about, yeah. yeah, and she talks about having LGBTQ plus people work with her. She's got gay friends and trans friends. So, I mean, like, and dream to web partner. Oh my God, of course. <laughs> I love Dolly, girl. I'm all, you know me, and I'm also like the first one to be like, if I... <laughs> yes. you never heard. Keep on, keep on. <laughs> okay, not nice. <laughs> but did you hear the story where she where she was talking about Elvis wanting to do a cover of it, and she tell said no? Tell the story why. Yeah, keep going. Tell it. Tell it. I know the story. <laughs> she said no because she didn't want it to get. Uh, she didn't want to be lost on whatever, and she didn't want to give yeah. the rights of it away, and right. she didn't yeah. know, you know, kind of, you know, how it was going to do. And then, obviously, our girl Nippy, <laughs> the <laughs> icon, the voice, Whitney Houston, obviously did it, and it changed it. It just changed her life, like it did yeah. all, all of ours, and it makes her to this day more money than I'm sure anything else. Yeah, she said that, and you know, I, I think it's so beautiful too because you know that she created something. And I was watching an, an interview. At, it's so funny you say this, but there's a couple Dolly documentaries and, and shows out this year. And in one of them, she says quite simply, and I thought this is beautiful as an artist. She said, "I made one song, but it is her song. She made it her own. And to hear something that you inspired in someone else, you know, oh, that was so small yeah. and." You know, it, it's just a beautiful, because I'm one of those people, if I have an opportunity, everybody got an opportunity. You know, I'm, I'm about pulling people up because I remember there was a time when, you know, gay people weren't on TV. I happened to be a part of the first all out gay cast, but even acting roles, if I would find out there was a role and I knew I didn't get it and they were still looking, I'd call all my friends and be like, yo, you need to get in on this. Because it's like, there used to be this weird thing. There's only room for one Latin guy on this show. Right, There's only right. room for one gay on this show. And I just don't see it that way. Um, you know, I think there's room for all of us. But other than Dolly, anyone else? Dream duet partner? <clears throat> we'll manifest this. Oh, let's manifest this, yes. Um, um, I love Dolly. Um, I want to do uh, music with, I mean, I'm a huge, I'm a huge Brandy fan, but I, I come from the Bible of Brandy. So that may be a little bit weird because it's like, <laughs> going with like one of my mentors and teachers, but um, obviously like a Brandy duet. Um, I'm obsessed with one of my favorites is, uh, I don't know if the duet would happen, but I, I actually love Nika Costa. Oh she's yeah. Someone that I like just, you know, she's not super popular with a lot of people, but she's someone that I love and I admire a lot. Um, the list goes on and on. I, Anita Baker, Tony Braxton. Um, it could be, I don't know, everyone, it, uh, all the Cardi, Cardi, yeah, Cardi, Cardi, Cardi. let's do a track together. 
That would be hot. What about, um, how do your songs come to you? Because I know you're a songwriter, but like, I have no musicality like that. So I'm just like, I cover it how the person did and maybe throw a rip or run in there. You make these your own, but how do these songs come to you? And then like, you know, what's the process for you, I guess is what I'm really asking. Well, there are many different processes because sometimes it hits you, something, something will spark you. And it could be like a message in your heart that you're just like, I need to like, this is something really I need to write about or talk about. Uh, I'm also one of those writers that like a title can mm. inspire me. You know, you can give me a word or something and it's like, you know, I don't know, I want to write a song about Moonlight. And then I just, I will just describe like what that experience is like for me. Um, sounds and music. I also love to write to to music that's already uh, arranged and, and created. So tracks, um, because I, it's about a mood so you can take any mood of a song and you can sort of write to it. If it's upbeat, if it's fast, if it's slow, if it's like chill, it's creating the mood and everything around that is what colors the song and the tone of the of the music, um, it, you know, marrying those two together. Um, you know, I will do like little voice memos here and there. Oh, yeah, yeah. My manager, you know, who's also, uh, shout out to my manager, Nico. We like, we write together a lot and so we'll, have a conversation about something like, oh, boo, that's dope. That's a dope topic to write, to talk about, you know, something that you're going through. Let's, you know, let's, let's visit that. And we just, it's building on it. But I would, I will say is songwriting is not sitting down and writing a song and finishing it. Sometimes it is, but like songwriting a piece of something can take six, eight months, a year. Um, a lot of the songs that I've written that I've put together with my team, those songs were written, you know, it took two years for them to come to, to light, you know, and yeah. it takes so many different layers of, of finishing, like, you know, getting a song from a demo to the mixing and the mastering and to getting it polished and to getting it sounding right. Because, you know, with every single song out in the world, you know, there, if you don't know this, there were 30 other versions of that song. Right, 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 right. Rain on me did not, I'm, I'm, I don't know, but I'm, Almost positive that Rain On Me by Lady Gaga did not start the way it sounds now. I <laughs> can imagine. I can get that. Me. Yeah, it was, you know, it could have been a ballad. She could have been like, I, you know, I, know, on me. You know, I just want to be that that performer who gets to be like, Rain On Me and talk <laughs> on the songs. And then that's a hit. Like, I was like, gag but I agree with you. And you know, it's interesting. My friend Maria Christensen wrote Waiting for Tonight on her guitar as Yay! a ballad as a yes. ballad and yes. she says any good song can be you can, it doesn't matter as the, the melody is right it could be an up tempo whatever yeah. you can put different you can change it, it to anything that's right. yeah. yeah that's what people don't realize that that uh songs lives matter because they <laughs> start as something different and they can morph into uh a lot of different things yeah yeah, so um, I want to open it up to some questions. Uh, those of you who are watching, feel free to add some questions in the comment section. I'm going to ask uh, Mila her her final question before I go to your comments, uh, and that is, uh, when just uh, finish the sentence. When people hear my music, I want them to feel connected. Mm. I want I them to that. feel connected. I want them to feel connected because. It is, they're, they're experiencing something that you don't hear enough of, which is, um, you know, the voice of a woman that is black, that is trans, that is mm -hmm. paving yeah. you know, her own path. Yeah, I love that. Um, because I think so many people feel um, like when you see a performer, you always kind of wondering, you know, your your feeling, and maybe that is the, the connection that you're speaking of. But uh, I know that when you performed at San Diego Pride, which I think le last time I saw you perform live, I just uh, kept thinking about how you do these high energy uh, numbers, and then when you'd speak to the gr the crowd, you had such a sort of a grounding, um, loving, embracing energy. And you know, it's it's in Balboa Park, and we're on the Stonewall stage, and there's people as far as the eye can see. And I just thought it was a just such a beautiful connection. Also, I, everything you're manifesting in terms of your career, when I greeted you, you were in this beautiful Beyonce style, you know, motorhome trailer. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yes. I was like, 
this is Beyonce style. Like it is gorgeous RV. I was like, come on, I was in a tent. It was gorgeous. And I and I can see that for you. You fit you fit into this in this world. And I think, you know, your advocacy layers on top of the talent in such a beautiful way. And I think one of the things that separates um a good artist and great artists, such as yourself, a great artist, is that you are vulnerable and honest about so much of your experience that it connects us to you. You know, it's not just a, a carbon copy or a cookie cutter. Because, we, are, for you. because we, we feel, and I think we thrive off of connecting and feeling what someone else is feeling that feels like what we feel like. Because you and I know, prior to like this thing called the internet and all this stuff, we, we were like the last generation to experience what it felt like to grow up without having this direct connection to people all over yeah. the world. And I there were times that. in our lives where we felt like there was no one else that experienced what we experienced. And, you know, we, we were like, oh my God, nobody else feels like me. And there's no other person thinking of what I'm thinking of. And so now that we know there are many, a lot of people feeling that yeah. way, we want to share that connection and we want to share that feeling um, that we, that keep that, you know, ties yeah. us together. Well, when we grow up, I don't, I'm not going to give away our age because I'm definitely older than you, but I remember the internet being so new that uh, I would try to, and I, I thought I was the only gay person. I never met another gay person and I didn't understand the science behind, I was like, are, do we sword fight? What's going to happen? So I Googled naked gay and then a picture of, an, I guess, a naked man showed up. Took 47 minutes to hit a nipple and I was like, honestly, TRL is on. This is taking too long. <laughs> really? I really did, did it sound like, like? Did it sound like? Yeah. Yeah. Then, then you're like completely get, like gooped because everyone knows what you're doing. Um, I want to ask you some questions from our audience here. Uh, Alex is asking, who is your biggest inspiration? Um, or I, inspirations. Inspire. I mean, to be honest with you, Janet Jackson. Um, is one of my biggest inspirations. Um, and I think that was because when I was growing up, you know, I, I come from the Jackson era and watching the Jacksons, uh, Michael specifically, uh, you know, there were many times where Michael, it seems like Michael could have been Janet. Mm -hmm. And there was like a moment of like, are they the same person? Could they be the same person? <laughs> And um, that sort of resonated with me in a weird way, I think, as also as a trans person. Um, oh, and I, yeah. I, I stand by this, too. I'm, I, I've never really said this publicly, uh, but I, I fully believe that Michael Jackson is one of the most famous trans people <laughs> ever. And the reason I said that is because Michael went through a transition. It wasn't necessarily about their gender, but they definitely went through a very public transition that went from A to B. And that was an experience that we all went on a ride with. Uh, so however you see it. But Janet Jackson, Whitney Houston, and probably Britney Spears, to be honest. <laughs> yes. So I- And you know that. that. I do know that, yes. I know that connection. Um, I, I was going to ask this question. And then you kind of said, you kind of soft answered it. But I didn't even, this is from someone, Jennifer is asking, you're uh, so eloquently spoken. Would you ever consider running for office? <laughs> I, I, I tell you that I this is, I'm pulling a Michelle Obama on this one. I know. I, I, I mean, I, I will bring all of the grace of Michelle Obama, but I I know my place and I know who I am and what I what. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, you could always sing at an inauguration of a president you liked. How about that? I am, Those so down. <laughs> I am so down for that. I, you know, I'm ready to give you a little lift every voice and sing, but I, I can't, I'm not running for office. Well, let's talk about your music. So what is, you know, uh, these are like, I'm sure your children, your songs, your music. Um, and I don't, you know, parents don't like to, to pick favorites, but do you have a song? This is from Taylor. Taylor is asking, what is your favorite song to sing off your album? Oh, uh, one of my favorite songs to sing is actually my song, Bruised. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, 
you know, it's a, it's one of those, like, it just really came from like the, a guttural place. And, and it's really one of those ballad like songs that I just feel like it's epic and it's, it's really moving. Um, and I always tap into the purpose of that song, which is to highlight the abuse that you feel or that you've experienced being in a domestic abuse relationship, trans women being murdered, uh, this just physical and emotional abuse that always pulls me into a, a place of how important those words are. Um, so if you don't know Bruised, go stream so, Bruised on, on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, Amazon, Mila Jam Bruised. Yeah. Yeah, and I think all of you are gonna run and do that right after this interview is, and we're almost done here. Um, when it comes to your um, looks on stage, you are known for mixing up the hair and the wardrobe. How involved in that process are you? Do you have like a stylist? Cause you always had exceptional style. So in my mind, I imagine you do it all yourself, but maybe there's someone else who helps. I don't know. So I do everything. Okay, so I do have the glam, the Jam Glam team. Shout out to my Jam Glam team. Um, it really is, I don't have a personal stylist. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have um, what I call my own style. I have style, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. um, I have worked with some brilliant stylists um, that have given me tools and inspiration. And some of those people are like, uh, like a shout out to uh, Christina Pacelli, which is actually Laverne's, uh, one of her, her main stylists, but she has taught me a lot working around her and working with her on different projects. Um, uh, a friend of mine named Willie, um, Sam, uh, Sammy Bravo is actually someone that I've worked with too, who has worked with Billy Porter and other people. But uh, I just love to be, uh, as a pop artist, you, you, I, I'm a, you're a chameleon. So that's what yeah. I love about it. It's like, you know, it is to change and it is to work with and, and, and try new looks and try new things and see what works and what doesn't work. I Trust me, I have days where I'm like, I love that artist that can have one specific look and they don't ever deviate from that. And that's just all the things. Stevie Nicks. Yeah, Adele. Stevie Nicks, her uniform. <laughs> Adele, her uniform. Yeah, the black dress. Yeah, the um, uniform. And like, for a long time, um, Janelle, one of my good close friends, Janelle, Janelle Monet did mm -hmm. that where she just had like a black and white suit look yeah. i was inspired by that but i also i get into you know a, a mood and i'm like oh my god i need to do this i need to do that yeah. but, um i with my hair and makeup team shout out to d d tb d Terrani bear and joe um who do my hair and makeup i i just love to surround myself with family they're all family and we just love play you know, and we just yeah. create and all right, so uh, real quickly, we've got two more questions uh, and then we'll let you go. Um, Carlos is asking, what makes you so strong and confident? Um, my mom, um, my family, um, having a support system and having people that really love me and really show up for me. Um, yeah. And it's important for us to have those figures in our lives. And if you don't have someone doing that for you, I'm here to tell you that I see you and I, I send you that love um, because I think we need to have that affirmation to be strong. And also because I just believe that, I, you know, I think I've lived many lives and I don't know how many more there are. So I think that this one really needs to count. And I just, I'm going all in. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And a final question is from Tyler. And Tyler is asking, what are two musical goals? Uh, sorry, that is from, that's not from Tyler. That's from Nick. Um, and uh, he says, what are your two musical goals? I mean, where do you know you want to get on the, the singing award shows, VMAs, American music? That I really, I have to say, and I hope I'm going to record this now. I really think that that's in your future. Like I, I really believe the people who say it and claim it and make it happen the way you have, I mean, I think you are going to be on the VMAs. I really believe it. Um, I would love two of my musical goals is to win a Grammy and to be inducted into the Music Hall of Fame. Claim it. Claim it. And see, now your other boyfriend is coming for you now. See? <laughs> <laughs> sirens again all right well maybe you all right well listen mila tell the kids where they can find you and where they can get your music and uh yeah anything you want to share i'm so grateful for this moment with you jay i'm so happy we did this my boyfriend is calling me but you can find me all over your social media at the mila jam i am the only one t-h-e-m-i-l-a-j-a-m on us, uh, Instagram, on Facebook. My Twitter is at the Mila Jam. You can see uh, my hear my music on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, 
anywhere you can get music, just find Mila Jam. I'm the only one. And yeah, I love you all. Thank you Yay. so much. Well, Mila, thank you so much for coming by. I, I thank you for being our first guest here on uh, Vibe with Pride. I, I, I couldn't, couldn't imagine a better guest. I mean, someone I know and I love, and I just, I've been so um, I, proud of something you say for family, but I'll, I'll use it. I, I mean, I, I've been so proud of your journey because you're just an, an, an incredibly talented artist who has the, um, the moxie and the wherewithal to, to make things happen. And seeing Mila, if you get the chance to see Mila live or if she's going live on, just make sure you follow her because I, I honestly think such massive things are in store for you. And you've inspired a whole generation of kids who may never even get the chance to meet her. I do have a little bug to put in your ear. I have a very big project that's coming out in the new year. It is a very big musical project with some other musicians. It is going to be insane and I'm very excited about it. And I do have a new project, music project in the works. So just letting you know, keep me on the radar. All right, well, make sure you follow San Diego Pride. I'm at J-A-I Rodriguez and all streaming social media, but make sure you follow us here on San Diego Pride. Until next month, I will talk to you guys soon. David Hernandez will be with me next month. So make sure you check that out as well. Thanks, Mila. See you soon. Bye. Thank Bye, you, everyone. Hey. See ya. <laughs>